Welcome to Voices of Women. I'm your host, Chris Stanis, and I'm the founder of Women of Wisdom Foundation. I am now interviewing our presenters for our 29th annual Women of Wisdom Conference that's going to be virtual for the very first time this year, March 11th through the 14th. So today I'm interviewing Karen Fletcher, Karen Joy Fletcher, I want to say. And she has been with us many years, been a presenter at WOW. She's an anthropologist, writer, Qigong instructor. She loves sharing her passions of Qigong, outdoor play, and wilderness connections with people around the world. She's a personal student of, of Zi Qigong master Zhu Mingtang, has trained with him at the Shaolin Monastery in China and traveled with him worldwide. She's also a student of the master Chinese medicine doctor, Dr. Zhao, and serves as his interpreter when he's in the US. She, she's been inspired from extensive, extensive training with Mick, the Barefoot Sensei Dodge, and she offers Qigong and earth-based movement programs to people around the world, including at retreat centers such as Omega Institute in New York. Karen also leads Qigong and tea and nature retreat trips in Western China. Of course, not right now with COVID going on, but I know she's going to be excited to bring that back to people, and that would be a fabulous trip to take. So she's going to give a workshop Saturday morning, March 14th. It's called Qigong and Mother Earth, Learning Directly from Nature. So welcome, Karen. Thank you, Chris. I'm happy to be here. Yeah, well, we're glad to have you again at the conference. You always um, add a very nice natural element. Um, so tell us a bit about yourself, how this began with Qigong for you. Hmm. Uh, yeah, so Qigong is really, I, uh, it's a foundation for growing my life. It's like the compost that uh, grows the soil of my life. And this whole journey began for me quite early um, when I was in college. And I, um, like many people who come to Qigong practice and the study of this um, movement practice. Um, I had a healing crisis in college and I needed to come home and take a medical leave of absence. And, and it was during this time, I found out about Chinese medicine and I stayed through Chinese medicine and working with this doctor, I found I really got my life back. And um, it was through that whole healing journey um, with this doctor and I learned so much about um, self-compassion, reconnecting with my, um, my inner self, my soul, and about self-nourishment again. Um, it was through this healing that um, my doctor told me about Qigong. And she said, this is where Chinese medicine comes from. It's a practice you can do to build your health and to increase, strengthen your health throughout your life. And um, she so recommended that I learn it. So <laughs> that planted the seed where I started to um, read all about Qigong. I went and learned Chinese when I went back to, when I was healthy to go back to school. I, and I studied abroad in Taiwan. And it birthed in me this um, dream to meet a Qigong master and study with him or her in China at some point. Um, and I had studied with, I found several teachers along the way, and it was 10 years later that I finally met my uh, Qigong grandmaster, uh, Xu Ming Tang, and um, had an amazing journey with him um, to Shaolin Monastery and traveling with him throughout the world, learning this system of Qigong. And I've learned with several teachers, and though um, ZY Qigong is my home lineage and one that I come back to. and. Um, I say through my Qigong practice, I, uh, I regained my middle name. <laughs> so Chinese medicine, I got my life back. Through Qigong, I got my joy back. <laughs> yes, yes. And, and you're a person who just exudes that joy. <laughs> so um, tell us about Qigong. Then you did a little bit, but um, what actually is it and, and the roots of it? So uh, Qigong, it's not as well known as yoga. <laughs> and though there are some similarities, many people have heard of Tai Chi, uh, which is a form of martial arts. And Qigong is the umbrella um, holding uh, Chinese medicine, Tai Chi, martial arts, and, and all of that. And so um, I like to just break it down in the word itself. So. Qigong is qi, a vital life energy. Uh, it's also information. Um, the concept of qi is very broad in China. So that's our English definition. <laughs> and gong is skill or to cultivate. 
So Qigong is really um, a set of tools and practices that help us to cultivate and strengthen and augment that life force that's within us. And it's a way really to learn from life all around us. And that chi that we um, have in our bodies, it's what um, keeps life bubbling through us <laughs> and our organs working and everything. Um, and we need to have uh, the energy flowing freely through our body. A chi is also found all around us. It's just as part of life it emanates and pulses through the earth. And so this um, cultivation of chi, we're cultivating our own chi, but we draw from the chi of life to um, refine and um, gather and absorb into, yes, refine the chi within us um, for good health and also for a, a beautiful journey of self-development. Well, something that you mentioned in the description of your workshop um, about it calling your soul. So on a personal level, how has that done that for you? How has it um, called your soul? Called my soul? Uh, well, um, I mentioned that Qigong um, really brought my joy back. And um, so again, I came to it from this healing crisis and then um, slowly started to learn different practices. Um, and, uh, you know, after I had done this long travel with my grandmaster in China and all around the, the, the world, and I had learned so many tools from CY Qigong and was excited to share, when I came back to the States, I actually um, fell into a deep depression. <laughs> and in hindsight, I think it was, there was so much I desired to express um, and had a lot of self-doubt at the time, like I don't know how, so it turned into this inward depression. And part of my road through that, it was really my dark night of the soul, is um, I took my Qigong practice outside. And, um, and I also made a decision because in part of my practice, I was striving, like I, I, I really wanted to get it right. <laughs> that was a big thing for me too. It was like, I always wanted to, I was afraid of doing things wrong, of messing up, of doing the wrong thing. And it, it showed up strongly in my Qigong practice. And I, I saw that finally <laughs> in, in this anxious depression I had. And I said, you know, I made a new choice and that, that I dedicated my um, practice to one of joy and to what brings me joy. And also at that time, I couldn't stand to be inside. It just needed to be outside. And that's a longer story. I have it on my website. <laughs> um, but so I felt, I just felt like I could connect with life. I could connect with my seat of well-being if I went outside and I brought my Qigong practice outside. And it's, it, the benefits of Qigong are cumulative. So day in, day out, going outside and being with the life around me that's happening everywhere and the clouds passing by and the orange blossoms blossoming in the garden I was practicing in at this period of my life, um, going to the redwood trees, I was in California, um, seeing the mist um, coming through the forest, all of these different types of chi outside started to fill inside of me. And, um, and with this, this deep awakening of joy naturally started to bubble out and through um, and through my life. And I, I have some stories of transformation I'll share a little bit later in the interview. Um, uh, through Qigong practice, I actually um, found my life calling. <laughs> yeah, no, there's many layers of that soul transformation. That's yeah, one description. Yeah. Um, well, and you mentioned like being outside and the, the necessity for you to be outside. Um, it, it, that ties in with learning from Mother Earth, um, learning directly from nature. So, um, you know, I guess that's like saying Mother, Mother Earth is our greatest teacher. Um, can you give an example of that? What have you learned from Mother Earth? Oh, um, <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> one piece. <laughs> <laughs> hey, um, so much. And yes, I like to, I bring my practice outside every day because that's where life is. And life, um, we are life. And so learning from life around me, um, I, part of bringing my practice outside is, um, 
I tend to be someone that can be in my head very easily. <laughs> I can think a lot. Anybody else out there <laughs> watching this? So um, being outside and practicing outside naturally brings me into my senses. <clears throat> and when I come into my senses, then my thoughts quieten, and my chi naturally um, starts to root down into my feet. And um, that's when the, the chi of nature around me can come in. Um, so I've had many lessons from Mother Earth um, and, and my formula is, is basically going outside. Uh, sometimes I go for a wander and practicing and just being open to the wonder and beauty around me and being in my senses. And sometimes that's, that's it and I'll just receive um, gifts from the earth that way. Uh, other times I have questions or um, if I'll give an, one example here is during this pandemic, um, this fall, you know, we've all had our own struggles with um, being isolated from friends and family, different stressors that have come up. I was going through a particularly rough time this fall with my son who had several things going on and and that five week period, we didn't quite know what was, what was happening. And so as his mom I was very um, worried and just not sleeping much and stuff. So I go, I do my practice outside <laughs> I get, and then I'm wandering, I'm going for a walk. And in a moment I stop and I look at um, this big leaf maple tree and the path. And um, it didn't take long for the, the transformation, the gift to come. I, I was just watching the leaves fall. And in a moment I felt the grace of mother earth. And she reminded me of, the, of, of living in grace. And I saw these leaves just twirl, some are just twirling so gently down to the ground. Um, others, um, you know, kind of swayed back and forth. And just in feeling, I could feel that um, grace of these leaves just by watching. And part of that is my Qigong practice of opening my energy field to feel that so directly. And then another leaf just kind of like splat. <laughs> I don't know how, it did, but it just kind of like splatted on the ground. And I just laughed because I felt, oh, the earth was showing me I can live in grace. And sometimes that means falling on my face. Like that just happens. <laughs> and it's okay. I, um, I get up and um, I'm, as being a parent, <laughs> this happens. It's a very humbling and amazing journey. Um, but for me, these moments of teachings from the earth have been augmented from my practice of daily doing my qigong outside, learning from nature, something we can, we do already through having a human body. But the qigong practice itself is tools that augment that process of receiving that qi, that information, that learning from the earth. Um, through the trees and sky and um, flowers and birds, whatever we find around us that can come in directly without passing through our mind. That's one, one of many examples. <laughs> well, when, when you came back from that walk, how, what realization did you have as far as, um, you know, dealing with your son um, and, and what was going on with him? Well, Not not, I'm not asking you to share what's going on with him, but how did it help you deal with the issues that were coming up? Well, that it um, it helped me have a greater perspective. I felt the love of life around me and the grace of life around me. So, and yes, maybe I'm not well, I'm not perfect in every moment. I'm learning on this journey. Um, uh, how to be my best me, how to be my best mama for my son, um, and how to be my best teacher for my students and all these roles. And in that moment, I guess what helped me is um, I could relax in um, the grace of life and knowing and coming back to the beauty um, of life and trusting my love for my son. <laughs> and yes, I'll get up and, and I'll I'll, I'll do it again in terms of if I felt like I wasn't you know, quite as understanding or patient as I wanted to be in a certain moment, well, I can talk to him and um, we can do it, do it again a different way the next time. 
Yes, and I, I love that about grace. Also, part of this is stillness. You know, I think being in this practice and being outside um, and stilling the mind, like you talked about, you know, our, our monkey mind, you know, we think a lot and uh, getting out there in nature and watching something like leaves falling brings about that stillness. And that's, I see that's where we get answers to things like you almost like, okay, how can I deal with this problem? You know, and I'm sure a lot of parents went through this this fall with, um, kids having to be um, in school on online at a very young age, um, whether you're preschool or kindergarten and all that was going on, that to get to that place of stillness and know that the answers are there and that, you know, you're, you're going to make, make it through it. And so you have a great practice. You have a daily practice that helps you with that. Um, and so that, and that's why you teach it to help others. Yeah. <laughs> so, so you did share like Qigong is deep in your connection to nature is obviously. And um, what are some other gifts? So you got this gift of grace. Um, is there something, some other gifts that you, you get from this connection with nature? Yes. Um, I'll share a special story and, and first just thank you for bringing that up about the inner stillness. And I think that is so important um, especially now with so much change and I feel like the change is speeding up on our planet and that and coming into nature and then Qigong augments this um, power to harness that for me being in nature it reflects as you said the stillness inside of me <clears throat> so bringing my practice in nature um, just helps to deepen that quiet spot and stillness in me where I can receive the, the teachings so another example I'll give is um, I, I lead these Qigong and wilderness trips to China. And um, one of our trips, we were leading um, a group uh, doing a trekking trip on the Tibetan plateau. So after many days of travel, uh, we finally got up to this 800 year old monastery. It's at the base of Genyan mountain, um, 22,000 foot granite, amazing mountain being. And um, I was, I teach Qigong on these trips and part of the Qigong journey is also just to pay attention to where you feel drawn to practice. And again, it's not through the mind of learning through the mind, but allowing you to receive the teachings from places through your body. And this was a special place. Um, and it's one of the 13 sacred mountains to the Tibetans that live in this area. And so I did, I got up extra early and did a practice myself, but also leading practice. And um, so practice this in this way also opens me up and anyone who practices um, has their own practice in various traditions to them access to other information and mysteries. And so during my practice, I asked a question um, of, um, we were been talking to some monks while we were there and who were asking us, why is the sun getting hotter? And why are our springs of water starting to dry up? And, um, and I just had this desire in my heart, like how, what can I do to be of service here during this trip, just on earth, planet earth, and to be of service to helping my mother earth and all of my brothers and sisters and relations and just desiring to be of service. And so um, I asked that in my practice and then that night I brought it to my dream time and I was gifted with a dream. Um, and I won't go through the whole dream, but in the dream I was, I had flown back to the States and was in a class I had been taking before leaving on this China trip. And my instructor said, okay, everybody, we're gonna have you go back to your seats now. And on your seat is a laminated piece of paper that tells you why you're here. I was like, okay, <laughs> I was excited. So I turned it over, I went to my seat and turned it over and it said in rainbow colors, rainbow letters, divine joy. And then it had a bunch of text under it, <laughs> which I wish I read, but <laughs> um, that's what I received. And, um, and so I felt that you know, through my practice and, and going traveling to this land, um, the earth gifted me the clarity of my, uh, my biggest purpose here on earth is, is being and sharing divine joy. Yeah, that, that's wonderful. And, to, and to, uh, to receive that on a journey, you know, in China in and in a foreign place, sometimes we, we get amazing messages. And then in a dream, taking you back to, 
home. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's just, it's wonderful how those things come together. So is there practices that do you do different Qigong practices at different seasons of the year? Hmm. Yeah, so um, part of Qigong and my journey with Qigong is since I practice outside every day and, and Qigong itself comes from nature, <laughs> it's the study of life really, and learning from the cycles and harmony of nature. So I've noticed that in practicing outside, I naturally have strengthened my own um, inner uh, knowing of what's nourishing for me at certain times of year. And for example, right now we're in winter here in the Northern hemisphere. And, um, you know, I see it, there's, animals are resting a lot. They're, uh, the squirrels eat a lot. <laughs> and then the plants are resting, they're nourishing their roots. And, um, and in Qigong practice, what we do more in winter, I mean, a lot of the practice you can do year round. And there's this natural tendency to do more um, quiet seated meditation, maybe more standing meditation um, that really like gathers lots of chi. It's the yin time of year of gathering the chi so we can birth um, the yang chi that is now just starting to rise um, as we just passed winter solstice. And so there's that emphasis on more quieter um, sitting and standing meditation, even sleeping qigong, which is really awesome. <laughs> and then um, as we will get into spring and then summertime, there's more emphasis on move, movement qigong. Um, every qigong practice does have the elements of cleansing, um, gathering qi, circulating qi, and storing qi. But at different times of year in the summer, we'll be more moving the qi and we still, and then emphasis on traveling to other landscapes to gather the qi, but we're also moving it a lot more. Um, so that's just a, a general overview of following what's going on in nature and you'll tend to feel it in your, your body in terms of what you're drawn to do. Right, that's good. So any tips for people uh, that are learning Qigong or want to want to start a simple practice they can incorporate in their life? Um, yes, I'll give a, a few. So one is to um, to step outside, go outside and, and, and there's a great character in Chinese called Guan. It means to observe. So just observing the life around you, which I think we're all having more opportunities to do with the pandemic and, and being in one place. And I've heard many stories of people really getting to know their local birds and squirrels and, and their own gardens. So that observation that Guan, um, that character of itself is made up of two radicals. One is the eye radical and the other is of the heron. Um, which if you think of embodying the medicine of the, our great blue herons here, they're very good at observing and the stillness mm -hmm. and blending in with their environment um, while they're mm -hmm. uh, looking for, for fish and other things. Um, so that's one is observation and just um, enjoyment, that enjoyment and joy of being outside in nature and observing the life around you. Um, <clears throat> Another simple practice is, uh, as we are in winter, um, it's the element of water and in our bodies, um, the, the chi of water is um, the same as the chi of our kidneys. <clears throat> and so nourishing our kidneys is, is a wonderful thing. Um, so keeping the kidney area, the lower back warm, um, but also uh, throughout the day, you can just rub your hands, this stimulates, uh, there's a point in the middle of our hands, the Valgong point on the pericardium channel. And um, just even rubbing your hands can heat up your body a little bit. <laughs> and then as you feel some warmth in your hands, you're going to put that chi just on your uh, lower back. <clears throat> and then just um, breathe into your kidneys, just even a few breaths of imagining breathing in good nourishing chi to the kidneys and exhaling out any stagnant chi. Let's do that a few times. And you can do that, um, uh, you know, several times. And if you think of it, just the act of putting our hands, we do this a lot, even if it's stressed or something, right. but um, the kidneys, if they're stressed, we can feel fear, but if we support our kidneys, we feel that trust and faith. So it, um, it's really good to strengthen the kidneys. 
And last practice I'll offer just because uh, I mentioned that I th I'm one that thinks a lot and Chris knows this, <laughs> but sometimes we just, in order to receive the good chi outside in nature um, or any of the good chi around us, we need to sometimes just let go of any stagnant chi in our body. So just a little bit of shaking um, the body. I'm just allowing a bounce to come into my body and shake out my wrist. This helps open up all the channels. It also will warm you up if you're feeling chilly. And um, as we open up the channels and any stagnant energy, thoughts, worries, slough off into the earth, um, just even for a few minutes. And if you can to do it outside, it's a great practice. <clears throat> and then um, you'll notice after doing a few minutes of shaking, um, your body will naturally start to then bring in that new vital chi. Those are um, three tips, observe nature, go out and enjoy nature, follow the wonder, use that guan principle of observation, take some time to nourish your kidneys and do a little shaking if you're um, uh, feeling a little restless or some stagnant energy or too, many, too much thinking that will ground you back to the earth and open your channels. Great. Thanks for those tips. I'm sure they and I know um, every class I've had with you or workshop, we're always shaking. <laughs> we start, start out with that shaking, which some people have some resistance to. I understand, I understand, but um, which is a curious thing. We don't have to go into that, but it's just, uh, just do it because you will feel that, you know, it's moving energy inside your body. And like I say, yeah. You know, and I'll just say, you know, I'm a big shaker. I did not shake very much when I was pregnant. So I learned new ways. <laughs> there's other ways. There's a swinging arms practice that I do have a, um, uh, a women's qigong class coming up where um, there's other ways to also move the chi if the shaking um, doesn't feel good, but mm -hmm. give it a try first. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So one last question. How, how does your workshop and qigong fit into our theme, celebrating the spirit of women, united we are one? Mm. Oh, what a wonderful question. <clears throat> um, Well, so um, on my path of, of, of practicing Qigong and teaching Qigong, um, I have a very strong desire to share this practice with women specifically. Mm. And um, because women, we're all connected to the earth, of course, and women have a um, powerful, strong, embodied connection to the earth <clears throat> um, through our heart, through our womb, wombs, um, being beings that we can create life, whether we choose to have a, a baby or, or we are also birthers of consciousness. <clears throat> and um, so our tie and connection to the earth is innately very strong. And it's a gift that we give to humanity. And um, in, in unlocking and in harnessing this power of learning from our Mother Earth, of feeling our deepening connection and oneness with Earth, we are united as one with all living things and especially with our sisters at this time. Because um, Qigong practice itself will Yes, it helps build good health. That's like the first thing people notice is strength and health and vitality. As you continue to practice, it will help you shine forth in your own soul purpose, whatever that is. And that will shine brighter and brighter. And united in this um, love and connection of learning from our mother earth, we will all shine forth and bring our gifts to the world and do it together. Well, that, yeah, that's great. Thank you. Um, so thank you for being on the show today, Karen. Thank you so much, Chris. <laughs> it's been really great. Yeah, can you give your website that people can go find out more uh, about you and the things that you offer? Yes, um, my website is my full name, KarenJoyFletcher.com. Lots of information on Qigong, Earth Gym. I have um, this class at WOW already posted on there, as well as other things. If anyone has any questions, you can contact me via my website as well. Thank you for this opportunity to share, Chris. 
Yeah, you're welcome. So also everybody can check out the website, womanofwisdom.org to find Karen's workshop and all the other offerings that we have March 11th through the 14th. Hmm. So, okay. yay. <laughs> yay. Thank you. Thank you.